Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of Ampere, currently being developed by JPL Repo, and this is actually a rebirth of a mod that was made and abandoned way back in version, oh boy, I believe 0 .20 of Kerbal Space Program, and that original Ampere mod was made by forum user Sodium Eyes, and now JPL Repo has brought it back to life in the newest version of Kerbal Space Program so that we can all enjoy this mod once again. And I am pretty happy to see it resurrected because I quite enjoyed this mod back in the day, and so I'm happy to see it here again. Now, what does this mod do, you may ask? Well, it's a power management mod that gives you some readouts and displays so you can see how your power is being used in your ship, as well as some fun options for the management of that power. It also brings into the game the concept of reserve power, which I really enjoy the idea of that. And on top of that, it also brings in new ion and plasma RCS thrusters, which are pretty cool, which of course use electricity to, you know, generate RCS thrust, as well as another fuel. We'll talk more about those parts in a moment once we jump into the VAB. Uh, but first, before we do that, we do have to take a look at the options menu here that the mod does come with. And the two important things in here are these first two, the reserve battery recharge percentage and the power low warning percentage, as these are two options that will basically control two of the features of this mod. Now I'll go into more detail about these features in a little bit when we talk about them individually, but for now with these options, the basic gist of the first one, the reserve battery recharge percentage, deals with your reserve battery power. The basic idea for the reserve power is you only use the power from the reserve batteries when you need to, and also your ship will only charge up your reserve batteries once your main batteries on your ship are also charged. And so you can set that percentage for your ship to know that, okay, it's fine for you to now recharge the reserve battery packs. So that is what that is. The second one, the power low warning percentage, is a really fun little feature added in by Ampere that's essentially an emergency power protocol. Uh, once your total battery power of your ship drops to 20%, your ship will take action on its own to maintain ship functions. And so here is where you set at what point it does that. So you can set it to any number you wish. Uh, the other options, meh, I've never really touched. So we're going to close that now and head into the VAB to take a look at the fun new parts. Now the first bits that we're going to look at, well first let's grab a Mark 1 command pod here, zoom in a bit, and head down to command and control to take a look at the fun new RCS ports that we have here. Now, as I said, we have two new types of RCS ports added in. We have the ION RCS ports and also the, uh, oh god, what is the full name? It's abbreviated PPT, but uh, the proper name is Pulsed Plasma Thrusters. And essentially how the ion RCS port works is it uses electricity as well as xenon gas, as you can see here, to produce RCS thrust. Now the thrust that it produces is one quarter of the thrust of normal monopropellant. So it's, you know, it, it takes a lot more effort to do the same amount as normal RCS, but it uses a lot less fuel, uh, basically sipping on xenon gas and electrical charge you can always just produce more of, so it's not that big of a deal. And its ISP is roughly half of what a normal ion engine is, so that basically lets you know how well it uses the fuel. So it's quite a cool little engine, I quite enjoy it. Now the other one is the Pulsed Plasma Thruster RCS, and that one is roughly one eighth of the thrust of normal monopropellant RCS, and roughly a quarter of the ISP of normal I RCS thrusters. And this one though, as you can see, it uses Teflon and electrical charge, which is kind of the odd thing about these. These pulsed plasma thrusters can only be used for as long as the thruster itself 
has Teflon. Now you can see here it holds, each of these little thrusters holds five tef Teflon. Once that's out, it's done. That RCS port can no longer be used. And now it'll take a while for that to actually run out because as you can see, it only uses 0.017 per second of Teflon. But still, once it's out, it's out. So I'm honestly not a huge fan of these because of that fact, but still a fun little option if you so desire. Now, you have, of course, these linear ports for both of these, but when it comes to the four-way ports here, they only come in the Ion variety, and you have a regular RS-105 Ion RCS thruster block with the four-way nozzles. And then you also have this one, which is a 45 degree angle version of it. So you have fun options there. Now again, a similar sort of uh, thrust and xenon gas electrical charge uses, etc., as the linear port, but you just have a little bit more control with these. I prefer these personally, but hey, if you like the linear ports, there you go. Now, after these lovely new RCS ports that we get, we get a new selection of reserve battery packs. So if we go, of course, to the utility tab, and over by the batteries, we have three new reserve battery packs. Now we have the Z100 reserve battery pack, which is essentially just a carbon copy of the Z100 rechargeable battery pack, just made blue. There we go. Oh, I also just realized that I didn't really pop these on for display. I mean, they are essentially exactly the same as the other RCS ports, just turned blue. But still, we'll pop them on there for, you know, size, comparison, etc. to uh, their normal RCS counterparts. There we go. Lovely. Very good indeed. And then back to the reserve battery packs. We then have the Z1K reserve battery pack which of course is the uh, counterpart to the Z1K rechargeable battery pack, just once again in blue. And then lastly, the Z400, which is again, just a different version of the rechargeable battery. Now you may be wondering, well, why do you just need copies of these then? Again, these are their own electrical charge. Like you'll notice here, the Z400 rechargeable battery pack has electrical charge. The Z400 reserve battery has reserve power. So your ship will not use these until you tell it that it can through the power management system. Now again, we'll go on to how that all works once we get out into a ship, but this just basically keeps some nice energy tucked away for use when you're in a dire situation that you desperately need power for. I quite like it because it never fails. I run into issues all the time of it running out of power on ships. I know, it's awful of me, but I always find myself in situations with that, and having some reserve power is a nice thing. It's a bit of extra electricity that doesn't get used by me stupidly. It's there for just when I need it. A very good, a very useful thing indeed. So, those are all the parts that we have for this mod. So let's actually go and see them being used. Don't save. Now, what I have done is put a ship into orbit with some reserve power, as well as the new fun little electrical RCS, and of course the whole power management system here in this lovely test craft. So let us go and fly that and talk about how all of this stuff works together. Now, for your actual power management, you have a similar button to that settings one that we had on the uh, Kerbal Space Center screen earlier, but this one will now open up the Ampere Power Manager. Now, normally when you launch a ship, it's going to look like this. When you start up a ship, it will be defaulted to just basically systems all shut down. And what you have to do is turn on your manager which starts to use the electrical charge because that's essentially the electrical charge being used by your command pod. And then as you can see here, it shows our percentage of power that we have, the power drain, and also the power production. 
Very useful tools here. A little bit nicer and more easily read than this resource tab here, so I quite like it. Then when you get into more details, you can open up the subsystems, and it breaks down all of the different systems on your ship that use power, such as the SAS, RCS. You also have fun options like show your crew members, the emergency protocol that I mentioned earlier, and you can even open up a full list of parts. Quite nice indeed. I, I do like that. And of course, it shows electrical charge with those things. Very cool. Now, we also have a fun little feature here, which we'll talk about in a moment. Now, beyond the subsystems, we also have the access to our reserve power system. And this is how you tell your ship that it can use your reserve power. Essentially, you transfer that reserve power via these buttons. So if we need to pump some reserve power into our main system, we use these top three buttons. If we want to recharge our power from the mains into reserves, we use these buttons. Very useful indeed, a very fun little system. I do enjoy it. And yeah, that is the essentials of the power manager. Not exactly the most complicated thing ever, but it allows you to turn on and off different things. So for instance, if we do want the RCS off or the SAS on and off, we can also turn them on and off from here and it will show you how much electrical charge it's going to use. Uh, but uh, when you have these off, they won't work, of course, with their power because, well, it's, it's off. Now, another fun thing is with if you have the power manager button here on, you can use all of your systems. I should have mentioned this when we jumped up here earlier. But when you start off your ship with this turned off, and if you disable the manager in flight, I cannot actually turn on RCS or SAS. You see it flashing down there because I'm trying to turn it on, but it can't because it cannot actually power it because our manager is shut down. So that is an interesting little side note to remember. Uh, your ship basically requires the manager to be active to actually distribute the power to those different subsystems. It's a cool little feature. I, I like that as a feature. It may seem odd to others, but for me, it adds a little bit of interesting realism to it. Cause you know, you gotta activate your systems to make sure the things are good to go. Excellent, and now we can turn the SAS on and RCS, all of that, and they are using power. And we can see as that power fluctuates as it gets used, for instance, the RCS. Now, this little option here is the turn booster. Now, you can possibly see on the YouTube recording that if we turn it on, it's going to use 1.95 power per second, and it uses all that power to help with your SAS system. This turn booster essentially pumps in more electricity into your reaction wheel and SAS to boost the effectiveness of it by 25%. So if we turn that on, we're gonna be using a crap load more power, but of course we can easily keep up with our solar panels and our ship will be able to turn via just the reaction wheel 25% quicker than it could normally, which doesn't seem like much, especially on a ship that's this small that's just really easy to control in the first place. But if you have a really, really large ship, you probably have felt the pain of how slow rotating with just the SAS is with a huge ship. So turning this on to give you that 25% extra power to the reaction wheel, uh, that can be a lifesaver and just make life so much easier. So it's a cool little feature. And of course, you probably want it to stay off while you're not using it because that does use quite a large amount of power. Now, as for the power, we're gonna demonstrate the reserve system here. So what I'm gonna do is first off, bring in my solar panels, which of course, you can see now our power production is down to zero, but power drain is going. But let's speed up the power drain a bit using good old hyper edit here. Go to the miscellaneous tools and I can lower down our electrical charge to about, let's say about halfway-ish. There we go and well, Say if you are on a mission, you for some reason your solar panels were damaged or something along those lines and you need to land but you don't have quite enough power, but you have reserve energy. So what we can do is transfer that 25%, 10% or 1% at a time of your reserve power into your mains. So if we click this, 
you'll see our electrical charge shot up and our reserve power went down. And we can just keep clicking it along until our reserves are empty. But we've gotten a good deal of charge into our main electrical system. And of course, the vice versa here of uh, being able to charge the reserve power with the mains. Now, if we take this away, bring back up our solar panel so that it charges up quite nice. Oh, of course, I could also do this. There we go. Now that the electrical charge has filled up and got to its 95% that we could set in that settings menu earlier, now it's charging up the reserve power. So once the main battery power is up to a good point, then it will go, okay, fine. Now we will automatically recharge this. Good, fun little feature. I quite like it, but let's just boom, 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 do that and then just raise it all the way up. Now, that other option that I mentioned earlier in that uh, settings menu was that fun little emergency power protocol. Now, that is a really fun feature. I really like it. Now, one thing I should mention beforehand, because it kind of goes in with it a, a bit, is that when you do do time acceleration, this whole power management system will work while you're in time acceleration up to I think 7x hold on let me go look at my other monitor real quick to see if I can find the right number yes a 7x time acceleration after that your whole ship will go into hibernate which is just as if you turned off this manager and it will continue to go and it will still drain a little bit of power depending on how what all you have going but it'll be on hibernate unless of course our energy levels get really low now what we're gonna do is just artificially do it and bring our power down and you'll see at this point at that uh, 20 percent it gives us a warning going oh god the ship's power is going down really low that's not a good thing so we can click ok and if we get even lower you'll see it forces time warp down to one and my solar panels automatically opened up so that it can finally get its charging back up and going. So basically it's an emergency power procedure so that if you are not paying attention for whatever reason or if you turned on time warp and went to go refill your drink and power just drained out, it'll automatically drop down to time warp one or you know, normal speed and open up your solar panels to make sure that you do not run out of charge. I absolutely love that feature. So I cannot tell you how many times I have put on time warp, gone to get a drink, and come back and gone, oh, damn it, my charge is gone. <laughs> now, now we can, you know, not run into that issue, and it just makes me happy. This whole mod, I, I like. Anything that adds in more options on how to control your resources, it just makes me a happy camper. And the reserve power solves an issue that I've personally had, mainly because I'm bad at designing ships. And things like the emergency power protocol you know, make sure, give you that little extra safety net for your ships. And then the ability to control your power here if you so desire, have a little bit more oomph from your power with the turn booster. And of course, just the fun of having some electrical xenon gas powered RCS engines that we have here. It's just all fun, and I I love it. This is this is a good mod that I am very happy to see have a resurrection up to the latest version of Kerbal Space Program, and I hope that it continues its development to bring in more features into the game. But if you would like to give this a go for yourself, you can download it from the link in the description, as always. And I do hope that you do give it a try, because it is just a fun, glorious little mod. And of course, I do hope you have enjoyed this episode today, and that you come back for the next. But until then, thank you for watching, my friends. And as always... Have a good one.